What's going on, y'all? So today, I know I'm a little bit late for my stream, but today we're just going to be doing a nice quick demonstration on how to do large scale paintings with the palette knife. And I've already gotten a whole bunch of bark and different layers stacked and racked over here all throughout this entire canvas. Um, eventually, at the end of the stream, I will be backing it up back in the camera up so y'all can see everything on this canvas. However, right now, I'm just gonna be showing a quick demonstration on how to do the bark portion. So just an explanation of what I've already done. So I've done probably about three to four layers of different uh, colors. I started from dark and I worked my way lighter and lighter. And I was using um, a palette knife to mix it here on my palette using the darkest ones first and I gradually went like just slightly brighter every time. Good evening Jennifer, good to see you. Thanks for jumping on. Um, let's see. So it's pretty much a black color. So actually what I did first was I actually painted this entire thing with black acrylics. So you can kind of get almost like one of my friends says a velvety feel or a spacey feel in the back. And then um, I painted over that like a very, very dark purple that looks black. Hello Joyce, good to see you. After that, I came over that with a slightly, slightly brighter purple and almost a greenish brown right over the top of that on multiple different sections. And then just gradually got brighter and brighter with the greens and the browns so that I can eventually create the illusion of a piece of wood. And even over the top, this is a more finished area. I've added like probably about three to four different colors all together. And then eventually I added a uh, solid yellow and then yellow and white combined to create my brightest brights. Now it may look like it's super, super difficult to see, but it's actually, or super, super difficult to do, but it's actually really not. It's just a matter of patience and time. So for this, we did that exact process I was talking about. And right here, it's kind of like midway through. It's kind of hard to see because of the lighting in the room and the reflection of my laptop shining on here. So I'm gonna actually crank that down just a little bit. There we go. So I'm actually going to be doing, actually going to be doing this lower area right here, just blocking in the shadows, and then I'll be demonstrating how you do basically this same process, probably right around this area. So, so the first line of business, you get some phthalo blue and some crimson mixed together on your palette. And once you've accomplished this, you make a really, really dark, more towards the blue side type of purple, which is the ultimate goal. Now, the crimson is the really thick color, so you gotta be select with how much you use. because uh, whenever you're mixing, you kind of want to do it in incremental amounts because if you use too much of that crimson, it just becomes uh, more of a chore to mix it than anything. So be sure to have enough kind of phthalo blue to, to kind of counter that thickness. And you need enough phthalo blue to make sure it looks black.
all I'm doing is I'm scooping it all up at once, and I'm just laying it flat. Scooping it up, and just laying it flat. Then we're going to do the same thing, just smacking it down on the canvas. And we just got to make sure it's got enough blue to where it looks black, even though it's not black. The really dark colors are mostly just blues. Your darkest ducks, unless you're doing like a nighttime scene, your darkest darks are going to be towards the blue sides. There we go. So now we've got a super, super dark purple, all lined up on the palette knife. And I've used most of the ridge of this knife, and it's a pretty big ridge. It's about the size of my finger. And we're just going to go drag it down. And what I like to do is like to grab as much as I can and then just scrape it over it to flatten it up so I can just reuse as much paint as possible. And then I'll go over that later with the thicker paint so that I can play around with the, uh, the textures. So there's your second step. First step is just to flatten it out. Second step is to come back with the same color just with a little bit more thick texture, and then you gotta let it dry overnight. It sounds like a chore, but it actually allows you the opportunity to kind of go and work on different projects. And I like that. I like working on a couple different things at once, especially when I've got a gigantor like this. So I'll be working on a real big one like this, for maybe three four hours and then i'll grab something smaller kind of like this uh, 16 by 18 or 16 by 20. 16 by 18 is just something uh, i pulled out of a frame that i was planning on using but i didn't end up using it so it's going to get used eventually this week All right, so now I'm just going to add a little branch and I'm just going to show you what I, what I was doing down below. So basically what you do, whenever you want a branch, it doesn't matter where, we'll say we want it right here, just a little guy. We'll say he's coming out, then he's a little bit thicker. So you just grab the paint that's already there, just kind of press it hard. And then we're going to have him broken off, so he's going to kind of slant down like this. So the next line of business, you grab the same paint and kind of just have it like that. Just change the angle. And then if you want it to later, you can literally scrape off the paint. And then add like little splinters and stuff right over here, over the top by using the edge of your knife. Just by pulling it. There. Now you don't have to flatten that out right here. If you've got the textures that you already like, you can just leave it as is and um, let it dry overnight. But we're not going to be waiting overnight just to highlight this one. I'm going to show you all the full process just as quickly as possible uh, in order to just give you all a little demonstration on how to create the bark really quickly. And I will be coming back and fixing it myself later. But the next line of business, you're going to take that same dark color that you made right here on your palette. You're going to scoop up a little bit of it, put it over to the side where you want to mix it. You grab some yellow, which is going to create almost like a green or, or brown. And I'm going to have some off to the side too. And we're just going to gradually add it together. Just scooping it up and then flattening it out. And it's not bright enough in my eyes, so I'm just going to grab some more of this yellow on the side. 
and start mixing it together. Now, because it was more towards the blue side, it's going to turn into almost a green. Okay, give me a sec. I'm not patient. I need to learn to work in layers, not in one day. Well, you can work in one day. It just depends on what you want to accomplish. Like, for, for instance, when you're working with really big projects, patience is a key. And this I've been working on for about 30 hours already. And this technique is literally a time consumer. And it looks really good. And it's really thick. And it's textured so you can actually touch it later on once it's dried. And that's, that's the point of having a really, really layered painting, especially with, um, with oils. You want to be able to touch them. You want to be able to feel them later. And uh, whenever you've completely finished painting it and it's completely dried inside and out, you want to wait about six months. But once that six months is up, then you can come back and varnish it. And that's like an epoxy coat almost. I'm not going to say use epoxy, but you can if you want. But use like um, something like Gambar or, or a gloss varnish. And it'll, it'll protect it from dust damage, from cracking, you name it. And from scratches. Okay, I want to work with a larger canvas now. You can. I like to work with both a large one at once and um, a small one. Whatever I put on one layer on the big ones, I go back to the smaller ones and I work on those with the same techniques except on the smaller scale. So it's just extra practice is all. So right now I'm just going to go back and grab some more of the yellow because didn't brighten up as much as I thought it was going to brighten up. So here we go. Just going to brighten it up a little bit. It's probably going to turn a little bit green. Okay, that's a little bit brighter. So what we're gonna do now, just kind of cut across it just a little bit. We don't have too much on the edge of the knife, as you can see, that's about all. We're gonna go over the top of this guy. We're gonna hit, actually we're gonna hit the, the uh, underside and then this side, because you're not gonna see too much from where the lights striking this thing. You want to hit the underside. You're just going to tap it in. Or you can pull it and graze it, but I like to tap it in. Specifically on this part. Or what you can do, you can actually scoop it up with the tip of your knife and you can get a large thick process or a large thick glop of it. And then you can just pull it over the bottom, just like that. And just make multiple blocks of that same paint. It's slightly brighter than um, what's already on there. And that's all we're trying to accomplish right here. Multiple spots that are slightly brighty, brighter. And I kind of want to build this guy an extra long branch right here. So I'm going to grab the tip, kind of pull it out. There we go. Let's give him a couple twigs. I'm just taking the edge of the knife and kind of guiding it. That's it. Hey, Brenda. Hey, John. Good to see you all. So. I got all the paint at the edge of my knife right here. So I'm using it almost like a pencil. Give me a face, Jared. How's that? <laughs> my unamused face. All right. So just like that. And then we're just going to go back and add a lot more yellow to what we've already got there. 
so we brighten it up a lot more than it already is. And I'm going to be hitting the top edges so we can add some more highlights to it. There we go, that's a lot brighter. I'm just going to grab, I don't need much, I'm just going to grab the tip, kind of tap it on, just like that. We don't need much on there. Just a couple little splits of green. And this time I'm going to grab some more crimson and add it to the mix. Create more of a, an orange and brown. Just more yellow because that's not, not bright enough. You can use white in this, but I don't recommend it because you don't want it to milk up the color. I like pure colors. These little whites right here kind of make it look almost sickly, but it works because it's slightly brighter. But right here, because I'm layering with, um, with the bark, I just want to keep it a slightly brighter, not too much. Let's hit right here, right on the edge. There we go. And then we're going to grab just one more bit of yellow. And we're going to go super, super bright. This is an expedited process, mind you. It looks a lot better when you take your time and let it dry. <clears throat> and I will be coming up close and showing you all the details that you're missing because the camera is frankly just far away. I'm just tapping it on right here, kind of grazing it barely. And any of y'all can do this. It's not, not a terribly difficult process. And if you don't have a steady hand, don't worry about that because then you can get more varied effects. You can take advantage of that and get creative with it. I had somebody tell me that they didn't have a steady hand earlier. I can't remember who it was. I think it was a friend of mine that was actually doing me a favor by recording for me for one of my projects. Here we go. But if you're ever worried about not having a steady hand, take full advantage of that and just create like um, textured, like leaf, leafy textured effects. Make it look a lot more unique than it is or than it would be if you just got a steady hand like I do. Now it's time to go for the solid yellow. And we're just going to barely tap the tops of it in select locations, and right here, and right here, where I think the light would hit. And then the ridge, because our light source is coming from this direction, it's coming down. Just go back in, solve yellow. Just take the tip, just kind of tap it on. It helps if you can actually get the, the ridge to just kind of slide and glide across the canvas, kind of like this. That way, it'll just glide right over the tip of the paint that's already on there. And we're going to do just a little bit over the tops of what's already right here. So what I'm going to do now is just going to kind of do a reverse and kind of blot out a little area where I think there might be a little shadow, like right here. Because it looks like this, this branch is kind of coming under this one, this one right here. So I'm just going to play around with that. Just like so. Just take that dark paint that's already there on your canvas. Actually, right here, we're going to go on this one and 
tap it off and tap it right over. And there you go. There's your shadow. Super simple, right? Any hey, of y'all can do that. Alrighty. That is all for tonight, y'all. I hope y'all enjoyed that little tiny demonstration. I'm going to really quickly show y'all all the details up close. After I flip around the camera. Settings. Camera. Front camera. Let's go with back camera. Here we go. All right, so this is what we were working on earlier. So we got multiple different colors right, right here. So we got your darkest colors. You got your slightly lighter. It's kind of hard to see, but I'm gonna get you all as close as possible without it kind of blurring. It's very shiny paint, so it's kind of unavoidable. But have multiple multiple different layers this is why i like to do it to let it dry overnight so you can just kind of let it graze over the tops just like this one it's got a lot of texture Ooh. hello well i guess if you're not wearing it you're not doing it right <laughs> oh yeah notice the difference between when you're doing it fast versus when you're doing it a little bit slower like this one it just looks a lot more detailed when you do it a lot a little bit slower when you take your time and really detail it out so just um, i'm going to show you all what all i've done <sighs> all right so on the right side we've got a really large tree that i painted in with a purple color because it's a little farther away and then I've added, um, I've added in quite a few branches over to the side. And the left side, I've added a really large tree. I don't know how many of y'all have actually seen me do this project before. And on the bottom, over here, we've got a few rocks that I added in actually just today. It took me a few hours to get all the bark up the top of this tree, kind of slightly detailed. I've just added one or two colors to it. I haven't done the full highlighting treatment. But you got your rocks. You add some blues and greens in the shadows and also some purples. It's kind of hard to see. If you were here in person, you could actually see a little bit better. But there's it's just such a shiny painting and glossy. So it's kind of hard to see in, in general. And then down below... This is the area where I was going to just block in the reflection. I've kind of left it blank here. I was contemplating just leaving that section blank just to have kind of like a spacey feel. But I'm probably going to end up just taking some some of that darkest color right there and just covering it all up, blocking it in. Then we've got a couple few branches down here at the bottom with their reflections. They've already gotten most of their details in. And you got your biggest branches and then a little bit of sap and oil coming out of this tree. I was, I was just thinking oil because um, right up top, I've kind of got a lion shaped out. I didn't actually mean to paint this part, but um, I just saw it there and I was like, well, I'm going to paint that later, so I might as well just Paint in the darkest spots so I don't forget that it's there. I accidentally paint like leaves over it. So here's the mane, here's the eye, the nose, the mouth, right here, like the front of the jaw, the neck, and the jawbone right up at the top, or top jawbone, I guess is what you'd call it. And then kind of right here's your ear. Then right down below, we've got a nice river kind of flowing through with a few different little mini particles that I added. There's a lot, a lot of details added into this, and it took me a very long time, and it's a lot of fun. 
kind of shaky right now because this is I don't want to touch it. But right here is one of your waterfalls. Here's one. A couple stones all lining the bottom with your cooler colors and shadows. And right here, you've got your big, big branch with its reflection right down here. And all the blue that's, all the blue that's um, the basically the ripples. And then the one, the one lone branch. Not sure why I put that there, but I kind of like it, so I'm leaving it. Catches a little bit of light, but then it goes back into the shadows. Paint on my finger. Well, I've already got paint on my finger. I am not going to paint on my finger, if that's what you're asking. So now we're just going to back up real quick. I'm going to show you all without trying to, without tripping over myself. Oh, and I'm tripping. This is what it looks like from afar. Hope y'all enjoy this um, little little live stream, little quick stream. Alrighty, love y'all. This was a fun time. Oh, real quick, just wanted to show y'all this. This is a project that I have been trying to paint for dead gum two months. And I have not been able to do it on purpose, but I painted it by mistake. Not really by mistake, but without meaning to. It was a, it was a painting that I saw in my dreams a while ago, like maybe about two months ago. And um, I finally managed to paint it without meaning to paint it. Like that was an attempt. This was kind of an attempt. And um, I was going to do multiple others, but I finally managed to get it. Love y'all too. Alrighty. Hope this uh, blessed y'all and hope y'all learned a little bit of something out of this. I'm going to be calling it for the night. I'll hopefully be streaming Friday, but if y'all don't see me, it's because I've got my daughter. So if y'all feel like, um, like viewing any of my work, just go back into my live streams or my videos later on YouTube or Facebook. I've got them all posted there. I haven't taken any of them down to my knowledge. So just enjoy that. Have a blessed night. Love y'all. Are these for people? Um, let me see. That's for a person. That one, that one's for me. That's actually a, a commission. That's a commission. I have a lot of different pieces here. This one is for somebody already. This is actually my biggest canvas piece. I will not be sharing who it's for, but that is for somebody. I've got a few others of that one, but those are none of these are for anybody right now. This one is actually mine. That was in a dream as well. I'm, I'm not ever getting rid of this. I need to frame that. All right, that's all. Y'all have a wonderful Thanksgiving. Hope this, uh, hope this blessed y'all. Hope y'all enjoyed it. I pray that y'all have a happy Thanksgiving and peace and joy and all sorts of love while you're, um, while you're on Thanksgiving break and even after. Love y'all. Bye.